Who is he? How shall we do it today? Very good. Very good. Repeat after me. The time is right. The time is now. Let's do this. Let's do this. That's the way some politicians actually start the opening when they deliver speeches. I think that's one of the most effective ways to get the crowd. One of the things I learned, some of you don't know, but I was, I'm still one of the candidates for city council. I've been in many, many speeches from many political candidates, and I learned that depending on the culture that you deliver the speech, and this is, I didn't know that this is what's happening, some cultures, they favor noises, not noises, but participation from the audience. That's what I would say. Here in those masters, everybody is so nice. Everybody listens, and nobody makes a noise. Very quiet. You don't get interruptions at all. In other cultures, when you go, people start yelling you from the back, and that's perfectly normal. You might say, well, that's kind of disrespect somebody kind of throwing something at me. But actually, I read this perfectly normal, and what they do is they like you, after all. I didn't know this. In particular, when you go to certain churches, that's the way the priest tells them to do. They never stay quiet. You go all the way, and right in the middle of your speech, they start making this repeating words, or saying yes, or no, and sometimes you don't know why they say no, and you just continue with the speech. That's something I learned that is hopefully helpful to all of you. When you go out in the world and speak to different audiences, just remember that. Continue with your speech. Whatever happens, if somebody jumps from the audience and starts kind of walking towards you, try to continue with your speech. Do not get distracted with other details of the surroundings. This is very important. When you get out of those masses, which is a very respectful world, just, you have to go with the crowd. And many of other times, the time for the speeches, they go all the way, all, all along, 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 and nobody stops the speaker. They go like five, six minutes, and you're like, hey, I'm the next in line. I want to have my time to speak. And nobody tells anything. Basically, what you have to do, if you're one of the candidates, you have to go and jump to the person who is supposed to do the timing. Hey, listen, my time is next. Tell this person that his time is up. So you have to be the one in control, not have to wait for the either a Toastmaster or somebody else. Just keep track of yourself. You have to be in control all the time. That's what's going to happen in real life. That's what I just learned. The other thing is, many times you try to go to the issues, like in my case, I was trying to go the issues for the city of Charlotte. Right now, there's no money left for new projects. All the money was given to the Panther Stadium or to the baseball stadium. There's no money left. When I have my opponent, usually they sit us right next to each other. I'm very polite with her. And usually she opens always with a personal attack. And this gets me because I'm trying to go to the issues, not to a personal attack. She says, oh, this guy was not born in this country. He was born somewhere else. He's not, he doesn't belong here. He doesn't know the issues for the city. And I go like, what is she talking about? And she goes for about 30 seconds. Then I have to respond because you cannot just let people think. I have one of my advisors who is a really good friend of mine. He tells me, she's trying, what she's trying to do is get you to admit that either you're illegal in this country or something else is going on. I have to always answer, hey, I'm a US citizen. Can we go just talk about the issues of the city? Finally, after like two minutes of talking, we get into the issues of the city, we get about how we're going to get money. She doesn't mind raising taxes. And I mind, so people don't have all the money in the world. We cannot just be asking people to raise taxes and they want to say yes. We have to go and say, whatever we have, let's work with that. Work with our limitations more than asking people for more money. Finally, when I get to that, one of the timers says, hey, you only have 30 seconds to close. And I go really frustrated because I'm trying to go to the issues and they call my time. Two minutes of talking about my personal attacks, finally, like one minute about the little issues, and finally have the remaining time to
to close my statements. Just to show you how I usually close my statements is I usually say, my name is R. Cardenas. I'm running for Sharon City Council, district number one. The reason why I'm running is because I'm not satisfied the way the city handles the finances. They have spent too much money in projects that are not way too important. They don't do any negotiations with anybody. When the Panthers come to them and they bully the city council, they keep the money that the Panthers need. Like right now, $8 million just for an elevator instead of for a roof. The Panthers need a roof more than an elevator. The money is gone. I'm talking about the issues for the city. We need more common sense, more financial responsibility. My name is Mark Cardenas, running for Charlotte City Council, this is number one. I need your vote. Thank you.